New York Jets quarterback Zach Wilson's ex-girlfriend is dating his college roommate Dax Milne, a wide receiver for the Washington Commanders, after she accused the NFL star of cheating on her with his mother's best friend. If that opening statement was enough to make you spit out your tea, then you haven't heard anything yet. Join us today as we take a deep dive into this recent drama. Buckle up because you're in for a ride. Starting with Homie Hopper. Abby Guile, the ex-girlfriend of the New York Jets quarterback Zach Wilson, has started dating Washington. Washington Commanders wide receiver Dax Milne after splitting up with Wilson back in January. The two were college sweethearts and had at one point even talked about getting married. Guess you can throw those plans right out the window. Milne and Wilson were both roommates in college and are best friends, prompting social media trolls to label Guile a homie hopper, somebody who immediately gets into a relationship with their ex-partner's close friends. Guile retaliated against such comments by announcing that Wilson was in fact the real homie hopper because of the fact that he cheated on her first by sleeping with his own mother's best friend. Giles has since deleted her social media accounts after getting flooded with harassment and troll comments. Milne still has their photos together up on his Instagram account, though the comments have been understandably turned off. Yikes. We're going to give you a minute to process all of this information before we proceed. There's enough drama here to power a whole soap opera. One thing's for sure, though, family gatherings at the Wilson household are going to be a bit awkward from now on. But how does Milne fit into the picture? Moving on to Milne and Wilson's history. Milne was a pretty unfamiliar name for NFL fans until this last weekend. The former BYU wide receiver has now become the talk of the town, thanks to certain off-field developments. The Wilson-Guile drama, of course. He played alongside Wilson from 2018 to 2020 as a wide receiver at BYU. The pair played major roles in each other's success in the college football circuit. Milne made himself available for the NFL draft after a career year in 2020, while Wilson ended up getting drafted second over all by the New York Jets. The wide receiver's name got called on much later. He was picked by the Washington Commanders during the draft's seventh round with a 258th overall pick. He ended up signing a four-year rookie deal and played a fairly small role in the Commanders' 2021 NFL season. While Giles' comments about Wilson cheating on her with his mother's best friend have yet to be verified, it looks like her new partner has managed to catch some of the heat as well. His account was filled with comments from users calling him a traitor and a bad friend. He ended up turning off the comments on all of his recent posts to stop the hate from flooding in. With everything that has been going on recently, Milne will surely be carrying a chip on his shoulder in order to prove his worth in the 2022 NFL season. And there were different reactions. Although it's the offseason, quarterback Wilson still seems to be getting plenty of action. After a brief period of keeping quiet and avoiding adding fuel to the drama, Wilson uploaded a post on Instagram where he mocked the entire situation. He posted an image on his profile posing with several of his teammates with the caption, took the boys to at Gauzer Ranch Club in Idaho before camp. Poor cell service. What did I miss? Following the rumors that he was sleeping with an older woman, his current alleged girlfriend, Nicolette Delano, began getting bombarded with troll comments on her social media. Jet fans have been pretty supportive of Wilson despite the allegations. Marshall Sports is even selling Jets-themed t-shirts, reading throwing bombs, banging moms. Some of Wilson's teammates are also having fun with the rumors. Offensive line Mickey Becton recently tweeted a meme of Hall of Famer Terrell Owens at Wilson, which said, That's my quarterback. Ahmed Sauce Gardner, cornerback for the Jets, also chimed in by quote tweeting Becton's post with a meme of Michigan's basketball head coach Juwan Howard smiling. Chad Johnson also quote tweeted the post with the caption, Zach Wilson is the GOAT, to which Elijah Moore of the Jets responded by commenting, No cap. People do love a good drama, and the current NFL side of social media is a testament to that. We don't even know what to make of this whole situation other than the fact that it was a roller coaster of emotions from start to finish. Ending with Satan in the socials. Turns out this isn't the first time Wilson's mother, Lisa Wilson, has been in the spotlight. She has previously made headlines for supporting former President Donald Trump's MAGA campaign, promoting hydroxychloroquine to cure COVID-19, and her rants against mask mandates. She also made comments on Snapchat, calling it an app for W-H-O-R-E-S though quite ironically, she has an account on it too. She recently posted an emotional half-hour-long Instagram video last Monday where she ranted about the evils of social media and predators on the internet. However, instead of talking about her son's recent drama and love life, she spoke about the pain of her daughter turning her back on her and hating her because of Satan apparently working through social media. She warned parents to keep their kids away from social media in order to prevent Satan from corrupting the youth. If everything wasn't bad enough already, now we've got 
got the Lord of Hell himself added to the mix. Someone needs to contact Christopher Nolan because this is Oscar-worthy material here, folks. Next, in other news. First, Washington Commander's owner Dan Snyder refuses to testify under subpoena. Back in October, Congress started an investigation into Snyder and the Washington Commander's workplace culture while under his ownership. It also includes claims of sexual misconduct. Almost four months before that, the NFL had concluded an investigation and fined Washington a sum of $10 million. Congress reopened the investigation after complaints of a lack of transparency by the NFL. On Tuesday, the committee's chairwoman, Carolyn Maloney, accepted Snyder's offer to testify via video conference, but said that they would be issuing a subpoena and wanted Snyder to respond soon. Snyder's attorney, Karen Patton Seymour, rejected the committee's reasons for having him testify under a subpoena, explaining that he would be testifying out of his own volition. His attorney also called the committee's concerns that he would withhold information unless he testified under a subpoena completely baseless. Though the subpoena had been issued, it was not given to Snyder because he is still overseas. According to the Marshals Service, they have no authority to serve a congressional subpoena to someone internationally. However, Seymour could choose to accept the subpoena on Snyder's behalf, but has chosen not to do so. Snyder was unavailable to accept the subpoena himself as he is currently in Israel for the one-year anniversary of his mother's passing, as well as several other events. With no subpoena, Snyder could potentially hide crucial information regarding the investigation and Congress would have no power to do anything about it. Next up, ex-Carolina Panthers first round pick dies at age 45. Rashard Anderson, the first round pick by the Carolina Panthers back in the 2000 NFL Draft and Jackson State star, has died at the age of 45. Anderson's death was confirmed by the Panthers, according to whom he died on Wednesday in Mississippi by Jackson State University, where he was a star cornerback during his 1996 to 1999 run. As of yet, the cause of Anderson's death is unknown. The Panthers made a statement about the incident and gave their condolences to his family and loved ones. Jackson State had won the Southwestern Athletic Conference thanks to Anderson when he was still a freshman. He would also lead the Tigers to the SWAC Eastern Division title later on in 1999. Anderson was selected by Carolina with a 23rd overall pick in the 2000 draft and played in 27 games for the Panthers. Back in 2003, he was suspended for the entire season because of violating the substance abuse policy and didn't play in the NFL again. He will always be remembered by both Panther fans and Jackson State University, and our thoughts and prayers are with his family at this time. Finally, Le'Veon Bell shifts focus to boxing and won't play in the NFL this season. Bell made a statement this Tuesday announcing that he won't be playing in the upcoming NFL season as he shifts his focus towards a career in boxing. The running back made the announcement during a news conference promoting his upcoming fight against fellow running back star Adrian Peterson at Crypto.com Arena located in Los Angeles on July 30th. The fight is being held by Social Gloves. Peterson appeared at the news conference via a video feed and said that he could see boxing in his future but still left his options about continuing his NFL career open. Both running back turn fighters are now free agents. Bell finished his eighth season in the NFL with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, while Peterson finished his 15th NFL season on the injured reserve with the Seattle Seahawks. It's going to be a fight to look forward to. Both athletes won't be running yards and instead be running their fists to see which one is the better fighter. Putting aside their NFL careers for now, let's just see how it goes. That's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts on the Wilson-Giles drama? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.